So like most games, MTG Arena has some shortcuts and controls that the game doesn't really explain to you what they do and how to really access them. I mean, to be quite honest, it's actually a fairly simple thing. In today's video, we'll be diving into some shortcuts and tricks that you can use in your gameplay when you play MTG Arena. Kind of go over each of these functions and kind of where to find them. If you like the video, hit that like button. It definitely helps out a lot. If you're new here and want to post new videos on the channel, hit that subscribe button. But let's dive in MTG Arena and let's talk about these shortcuts. All right, so if you're unsure 100% immediately where you need to go to in MTG Arena to kind of see where these shortcuts are, it's actually pretty straightforward on where you need to go. First we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to the cogwheel up in the upper top corner here and we're gonna click on adjust options. We are gonna go to gameplay here. And this will actually bring up a bunch of gameplay options that we can actually choose and select. Uh, depending on what you want to do, you can do various things up in here by checking these boxes here. If you don't want to see these alternate art styles and just want to see the actual standard cards, you can click that button and various other things. Now down here, these are the shortcuts we're actually going to be talking about today. And I'm going to go through each one, kind of talk about what each one does, kind of give you a little example of what each one does and go over each one. So the first one is actually a fairly simple one. It's called cycle chat. Essentially what this means is you just hit the tab key. What it's going to do is actually bring up your friends list. Yes, I don't have a lot of friends on MPG Arena, but that's essentially what that function does. We're just going to hit the tab key, bring up the friends list, close the friends list. So the first thing I noticed when I went to go edit my original video is that my camera was blocking the first step or first shortcut while I was in my gameplay. So that shortcut is going to be the show phase. By pressing the L key in game, you are going to see the phases of the turns here and here and here. So what this essentially does is it will show you the various phases of a turn and it will allow you to, you know, see how the turn is progressing. Now, this next feature that the game has is something called control. Full control is what it means to kind of, you know, go through the process and the steps of each thing. So if you want to do a combat trick or some sort of turn trick when you want to place certain spells in a certain sequence, you can turn on full control. So we hit control, which is the full control button. We see now above our phase turn that it says full control. And when we go to cast our creature here, it's now going to tell us to pay one, which we can either tap the mana ourselves. We can auto pay. We can then turn off full control, which will probably resolve it automatically. So we're just going to hit this. And we're gonna also hit resolve. So essentially it allows us to kind of, you know, trigger our cards the way we want to and how we want to. Like I said, this is probably more so used for combat tricks and whatnot. And we can now turn it off since we're done. Now, another way to turn on full control, if you want to actually turn it on during your phases is that you can actually turn it on manually without actually having to hit a button by clicking on the phase you want the full control on. So if we want to put full control on here, we can click on our first phase we can then, you know, cast our spell. We can do it on our second phase. We do it at our end step. We can do it at our upkeep. So let's just say we want to do this. It's now going to ask us to do that. We can turn this off now, resolve it. That's fine. Now, another thing what we could do here in this situation is we could actually do it on our opponent's turn. So we can click here and here on our opponent's first stop, first phase, second phase, and whatnot. So when we go to our opponent's turn and they go to cast something, even though we don't have a play here, we can technically hold priority. Sure, our play technically is selfless savior. We can always sacrifice to give our battlefield raptor, uh, you know, indestructible. But what we could also do is maybe we have a one mana play. White doesn't have too many one mana plays that we, you know, interact with our our carry did that our opponent's playing or Sparky's playing in this situation. But we can always put a hold on this to give our opponent the illusion like something's happening. Now, when our opponent goes to move phases, it's actually going to hold there as well. So if we had another combat trick or something we want to do as speed or catch our opponent off guard, we can always do that. This is very good in situations where you want to maybe bluff you have some sort of removal or maybe some sort of interaction when you have open mana at a certain point. Putting on the deck in certain matchups, putting on full control is actually pretty good because it can bluff your opponent as if you have a spell and or maybe you don't. Your opponent will never know if they... if. If you ever watch any videos and sometimes people play spells because they want to see if something sticks, this is one of the situations that if you were to play a spell regardless of us not having anything to really do for one mana, our opponent may think that we may have something to play differently. So this next one is called shift. It's called hold, control, hold full control. So what this is going to do is going to hold full control until we press the buttons yet again. 
or hit control to end it. So essentially it's just another way that we can hold full control until until we want to stop ending it. So it's just going to continue as well the whole time. And we can keep on holding full control over and over again until we decide to pass on holding control. And it'll keep on going through the various phases and it will show all the phases that we can put stops on. And our opponent won't be able to draw, they won't be able to, every time they cast, every time they switch a phase, we have full control on until we just hit the control key. And then they are able to, you know, we can interact because we have priority here, even though we don't have full control. It's just either we can discard a card for Season Hollow Blade or Self Savior. But that is essentially what holding full control is. It pretty much puts stops everywhere so it can give our opponent the illusion maybe we have something to interact. So the next button that we can do, it's actually going to be hitting the enter key. So if we hit the enter key, it's going to auto pass until our opponent does something. And now our opponent played something. And that essentially is what that does. And we could, you know, once we do this, we can always discard it. We can always hit the enter key to, to resolve. And now it's, if you look down here at my bottom right, where I'm blocking, if you look down here at the bottom right, after we're done with the blocks here in this phase, we are actually gonna be able to, uh, it's gonna auto pass the rest of the turn. Essentially meaning now we're just going to pass until, you know, our opponent does something. Now we're back onto our turn. Now, if you are somebody who likes to auto tap your mana by yourself, so if you tap tapping, you know, your mana out like this, and then you realize you tap way too much mana, you can hit the Z key and you can sit there and undo your mana you tap. This really only applies if you ever untap your mana, if you tap your mana and didn't mean to tap a particular color, if you're playing multiple colors. Or if you tap maybe too many when you want to go play a spell because you want to auto tap it yourself, make sure they didn't tap on a particular color you want to tap, you can tap Z and always go backwards on tapping that mana. So this next one is going to be pass in priority. So we're going to go all attacks here and we're going to see what our opponent does. So we're going to pass priority. All right, so our opponent does this. We are actually going to cast our spell on here. And give all our creatures that and we're going to discard a card by doing this and we're going to press space to pass the priority for this so space is just another way to just keep on passing if you have a, if you want to resolve something without actually having to click the orange resolve button that essentially is what that does just another way to resolve the turn so maybe you have a spell that cost x in this situation, we don't really have a card in our hand currently that costs X because we have no cards in our hand. But maybe a card that you have a cast of X and you're unsure of exactly how much money you have. This usually happens in the later games, especially when you have a lot of lands. They start stacking up on one another. Sometimes it's harder to tell how many physical lands are there. So you can hit a, you can hit QQ. And what this is going to do is going to actually tap you out completely. So it's going to show that we have four mana available. We can hit the Z key to go back. And essentially, we blow all our mana essentially then to play our X spell without no without you know, but, but it's the best way to kind of count it. And if we have multiple colors of mana, it will actually show you the mana symbols, uh, breaking down, you know, what you tap and what mana you have. So if you have four white, you know, two blue and three green, it will tell you that you have that much. Now, the next thing you can do, instead of hitting double Q, you can hit, you can hold the Q key. And what this will do, well, it kind of like if you ever try to select multiple files or something like that, this will essentially allow you to select and deselect groups of mana or groups of you know various things so if we decide to let go it's gonna do this we can then go back and hit q and q and it will tap it again and the same thing probably applies to creatures so if you want to attack with a group of creatures instead of having to physically click one by one by one by one you can probably hold the q button and click you know the various things Now this last option is actually a draft only option and that option is going to be show collection overlay and essentially what this means is if you're drafting and you put stuff into your draft pool and you kind of want to see your collection but maybe you have your deck list pulled up so maybe you're going through your deck list and you're looking at it and you're wondering okay i need to see my collection is there anything else i want to switch around in this so essentially if you hold the alt key and you have your screen like this it will actually bring your screen down and it will show you what you have in your draft collection and it will allow you to kind of look at your deck list as well as your collection of cards you drafted that you're not putting in your deck currently 
it's just a little bit of a shortcut way to kind of show you exactly if you're trying to still figure things out how many of cards you want it's just kind of helps you overall in that sense and that being said i mean these options aren't anything super exciting but i mean they're there and i feel like it you know the arena client doesn't really let you know they're there without you really looking around but that being said guys if you like the video let me know it definitely helps out a lot by hitting that like button if you're new here want to post new videos on the channel hit that subscribe button but i'll see you in the next magic the gathering video